let's stand our feet. Um, and of course, um, we've got so many things to pray for tonight, so many people to pray for tonight. Um, but we really want to focus in on Sister Opal tonight. Sister Opal is in very, very critical condition right now. Um, she is on life support. The family has been called in. Uh, so we are going to pray that God will touch her and heal her and help her. And, um, you know, we, we just need to pray through the night, saints. Uh, pray with her all the way through the night. And I think that I think her church family can do that. Um, when you wake up in the middle of the night or if you're if you're a night owl, pray, pray with her. Uh, and, and, and just believe God to touch her. And as we have said, we believe God till he says differently. Uh, so we're going to believe God to touch Sister Opal and to, to just absolutely uh, make a way for her. And uh, also, Brother Rick is in the hospital. Uh, they think that he has some type of infection possibly in his uh, intestines. And so he's struggling tonight. My mom and dad were in a car accident today. Um, and mom is mom was going to be here. Uh, their car, I don't believe, was actually hurt very bad, but a lady rear-ended them and then fled the scene of the accident. Isn't that wonderful? Um, but they found the lady. She had a license and insurance, so I'm not sure why she ran. <laughs> Something was in that car she didn't want nobody to know about. Um, but anyways, um, mom called me right before I came out of my office and just said, you know, she's just too banged up. She was going to be here, so we want to pray for her. Um, Brother Earl and Sister Cheryl and Sister uh, Carolyn are on their way back from Nashville. And then uh, Missy and Will and the boys and Tommy uh, are going up to Nashville even, uh, I think, as we speak. So we, we just have a lot to pray for tonight, Saints. We have got a lot to bombard heaven for tonight. I know Jay is out sick. Uh, he's not feeling well, running a fever and sick, so we want to pray for him. Um, but I I think we can pray Sister Opal through the night. I really believe that. I believe God can use this as a powerful tool to show his great arm. Uh, but again, whatever the outcome, we say good is the will of the Lord. And uh, so, because we know, don't we know, God loves his children more than any of us love them. So, but we're going to pray with her through the night and uh, pray that God would touch her. Uh, and help her. It may be uh, that that depending on what happens through the night that I will get my car and head up there in the morning. Uh, so let's just pray, saints. Let's pray. I believe that by the time the sun comes up in the morning, that Sister Opal's system can absolutely be regulated and she can her her vitals can be normal. I believe that. I believe before the sun comes up in the morning uh, that she could be alert, awake, and breathing on so we're going to pray that God would do his perfect will and would watch over his word to perform it concerning his people. So let's just pray, saints. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, God, that you have gathered us to this place once again tonight. And I thank you for those faithful, God, who have come tonight, Lord God, who have come into your house, Lord Jesus, to seek your will, Lord, to worship you in the beauty of holiness and, Lord, to hear from your great word. And right now, Lord God, we bring Sister Opal before you, God. None of this surprises you. You're not shocked at any of this. Lord, you are not standing there, God, wondering how to react. But before she ever got to this place, Lord, you had already been there, God. And Lord, we number one say good is the will of the Lord. But Lord, we're going to speak the faith of God for the healing of our dear sister right now. Lord, I believe before the sun comes up in the morning, God, that she could be regulated, God, that her vitals could be restored, God, and she should be conscious and, Lord, breathing on her own, God. I believe that tonight in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we as her church family, God, send our faith, God. We send the word of God into Nashville, God, into Vanderbilt Hospital, Lord. And we declare with your stripes she is healed, God. Send your word, God, and heal the disease, God. Lord, I don't believe, God, that she can just be alert and awake and breathing on her own. But I believe leukemia should be rebuked out of her body, God, by the morning, God. The infection, God, rebuked, Lord, by the morning, God. Lord, let it be done, God, according to your precious word, God. 
And Lord, we pray for Brother Rick, God, the same God. Lord, rebuke the sickness off your people, God. Heal your people, God. Sister Joy, God, healing and comfort, God. Sister Dot, healing and comfort, God. In the name of Jesus, God, Missy and Will, God, Marcus and Mourning. Uh, and, uh, Marcus, God, uh, and, 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 and Thomas and Addison, God, and Tommy, God. Uh, Lord, we believe, God, that you can that you can comfort and strengthen, but also, God, let conviction reign, Lord, like a mighty fountain on them, God. And, Lord, let them understand the God of their mother, God. Show yourself strong to them in this time, God. Lord, God, this woman has left a legacy of faithfulness, God, and dedication and commitment to the house of God and to the God of her salvation, God. Now, Lord God, let that work on her children, God, from the borders, God, of Kingsport, all the way, God, to the hospital in Nashville, God, until they say we will serve the God of our mother. We will be faithful to the God of our mother. Oh, God, I believe you to do that in the name of Jesus, oh, God. Make a way, oh, God, for your children even now, oh, God. Lord, we believe for Jay, heal him, God, for my mother and my father heal them oh God Satan the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus we declare the healing of the Lord and Lord we declare your great arm in the midst Lord of your people God Lord do oh God that which pleases you Lord and we will give you praise and glory and honor for it God now watch over us in this time God move according to your great power Lord let the will of God be done in this place as it is in the heavens God and for all all of this we will give to you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's worship God.
that became a disciple of Paul. And uh, so Luke's gospel is, uh, is a recording of the witness uh, and, and the, uh, the, the accounts of those who are eyewitnesses uh, to the life of Christ and to the words of Christ. <coughs> and so he's writing. Uh, and it's amazing uh, that this is found in Luke. Matthew didn't record this. John didn't record it. Mark didn't record it. But Luke records this. And it says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. He comes into Simon's boat and he says, Simon, the people are pressing on me too much. Go out just a little bit and then I'll teach them from the ship. And Simon was willing to offer him this ship. He took away from washing his nets. Uh, which means that they had finished for the day. They had, they had given up on the day. Uh, and it says, uh, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, He said, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. He said, Go out into the deep and let your nets down. And he said, You're about to receive a great catch. And of course, Simon answered on him and said, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. He said, we have been at this all night long and we have brought in nothing. Now, I'm going to tell you, I believe that their failure in the night was really due to the fact that that Christ did not need them in the market right. selling their ship right. or selling their fish. Right. He needed them by the bank washing their nets because he needed access to Simon's ship. Right. And I think that sometimes we see uh, what, would be, uh, what would be considered by worldly knowledge and wisdom, right. failure. Right. But in actuality, God has a plan. And he's not going to forsake his plan. And he's not going to forsake his people. Amen. And so he said, Simon, launch out into the deep. And when you get out there, you're going to have a great catch. A draught just means they're going to bring in a tremendous amount of fish. And Simon looks at him. And at first he says, but Lord, Master, we have told all night. And we have caught nothing. But something touched Simon's heart. And he made this profound statement that I think that we all need to get into our spirit. Because we cannot look at things as the world sees them. And we cannot look at them as our flesh wants to see them. We have to see every aspect of life through the eyes of the word of God. I've been telling you all for weeks, God has given us an answer to everything yeah. in the word of God. Yeah. There is not a circumstance or situation that can present itself into our lives that God has not already made a provision in the word of God. And if we will seek out the word of God, we will find the answer and the solution to the problem that even at times the doctor can't figure out, yeah. the nurses can't figure out, the politicians can't yeah. figure out, the business world can't figure out. Here, Simon, this skilled fisherman, come on, come on. looks at this man and says, We've been at this all night and caught nothing. There's no fish out there. There's, there's nothing out there. We have, we have toiled all night. We're even out of here washing our nets. We have given up. There's nothing to be caught out there. But there's something that touched the heart of Simon. And this is where you and I as children of God must be led of the Spirit. We cannot be led by the seeing of the eye nor by the hearing of the ear. 
We cannot be led by what it looks like. Somebody say, don't be led by what it looks like. Because if we're not careful, we will lose hope, not realizing that it's not a failure. It's just we are getting ready to walk in to the real plan that God has had before we were ever formed in our mother's womb. And this is something that needs to get deep down in the heart of the children of God. Somebody say, God has a plan. All night long they caught nothing, but that's because God had a plan. All night long they looked like they were failing, but God had a plan. All night long the skills and the mastery of their of their of their positions and of, of their trade they were putting into practice and they were yielding nothing, but it was because God had a plan. God has a better plan. God has a greater plan. God knows what he's doing in our lives. And we have to absolutely, without hesitation, accept that God's will is better than ours. That God's plan is better than ours. And if we will be led of the Spirit, instead of always being led around by the flesh, we will receive the plan of God. And his promise is greater than your plan. His dreams are bigger than your ideas. Oh God, hallelujah. The outcome is greater when we yield to God's solutions. And he said, Lord, we have toiled all night. Caught nothing. This is where everything changed. The same thing that Simon is getting ready to say to Jesus. Jesus Uh, without the same terminology but with the same understanding said to the Father in Gethsemane. He said, Lord, we've taught all night and we've caught nothing but nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net. He said, in other words, everything in my natural ideology is telling me that there is absolutely nothing to this. But there's something in me telling me that you know what you're doing. And that is what's going to have to happen in our hearts. When we look at what Sister Opal's going through right now, there's something on the inside of us that is going to have to say, Lord, no matter what it looks like, there's something in me telling me you know what you're doing. Somebody say the Lord knows what he's doing. I don't understand why people suffer the way they suffer, but I've got something in me telling me that the Lord knows what he's doing. And sometimes he'll let us go through the failure of the night. Sometimes we'll go through all night long and all we'll see is opposition and failure. But there has to be something in us that when the Lord says go, we say, Lord, we've been there before and nothing happened. But something in me tells me, you know what you're doing. Lord, I've done it that way before and nothing happened. But something in me tells me, you know what you're doing. I feel the Holy Ghost in here because somebody either watching or in this room needs to tell the Lord, I know that you're asking me to do this again. And I've done it before. And I don't see anything. But something inside of me is telling me you know what you're doing. Oh, hallelujah. And Peter says, Simon, he says, nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down this man. I'm not doing it because I think it's the right thing. I'm not doing it because I even had plans to do it. I'm not doing this because I think somehow that your calculations might be right. Here we fished all night long. And now you're wanting us to go out in the middle of the day. Oh, something in me. My training tells me this won't work. Everything around me that I've ever learned tells me this can't happen. Lord, all night long we have fished and we know what we're doing. But something in me tells me you know better. God in heaven, I feel 
feel something in this place. Something, Simon says, Lord, something in me tells me that even though I know what I'm doing, you know better. And that's going to have to get deep down in our hearts because of what is coming upon the church in these last days. Everything we think we know, we might just have to give up and say, Lord, but you know better. Everything we think works, we might have to look at the Lord and say, Lord, we know that you know better. One of the things that has always hindered God's people in the middle of their trouble, in the middle of their defeat, and even in times of their triumph, is that they have thought they did something to bring about the moment. But I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing, and he knows it better. But what the church cannot do right now is succumb to this temptation yeah. to feel as if, Lord, all night long. Yeah. Yeah. The church has been, and I speak this generally, the church has been in a long night season. Yeah. We've been toiling through the night. We've been working through the night. Yeah. We've been doing everything that we can through the night. We stayed faithful through the night. Brother, we may have not been catching a whole lot, but we were still in the ship all night long. And sometimes the church can get themselves into such a place where they feel like, God, the night is far spent. It's too long. But I'm going to tell somebody here and watching over live stream, stay in the ship even if you've been in it all night. It's been a long night for the church. The church has been through apostasy and heresy. It's been through division and destruction. But there are some people that did not abandon ship. We still are toiling through the night. We're still letting our nets out through the night. We're still trying to catch them through the night. But I'm telling you, Jesus is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to share this video. You, We need to share it with all the brothers of the fellowship because there's an auction from the Holy One in this place tonight. I didn't come here to preach this tonight, but God knows better. Hallelujah. All we needed to do is stay with the ship. Isn't that what Paul told him? He said, men, I know the storm is raging, but the angel of the Lord stood by me this night and he said there will be no loss of life save the ship he said boys stay with the ship whatever you do stay with the ship because I'm going to tell you I don't care the church has been broken apart there is all kinds of stuff floating in the water right now but if you're close to the ship you're going to get sucked in when the vacuum starts as it sinks but those who stay
church is not over. We're going to get this in the water. We're going to cast that net out one more time. Hallelujah. But John said, I saw a number which no man can number. Brother, we're getting ready to catch us a drop. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor, tell him that means a lot. That means a lot. We're getting ready to catch us a drop. Hallelujah. We're going to cast the net out one more time. Are you hearing what I'm saying, saints of God? The Lord's going to speak. And when he speaks, we're going to throw out the net. And when we do, there's going to come in a number which no man can number. Having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, God. There's a lot of people giving up on the church right now. Because they say, man, we're tired. We've been toiling all night, and we're not catching anything. But God has a plan. Before they could take any fish, the Lord had to be in the ship. I'm going to say that again. Before they could take in the fish, the Lord had to be. Hallelujah. Which is why we got to keep worshiping. We got to keep glorifying him. We got to keep getting things right in our homes. Things right in our hearts. Things right in our churches. Because if we'll do it right. Not as we will. But according to his perfect purpose. And plan. And saints of God, the Lord's going to be on the ship. And the first thing he did was, he said, just cast out a little bit so that I can speak to the people. Yeah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, right now, we're not going in deep waters. Yeah. Yeah. I just need you to cast out yeah. a little bit yeah. so I can call to the people. Yeah. When I see people beginning to make their way into this church, yeah. it is only a forecast yeah. of what is yet to happen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When I see Brother Jonathan and his wife and his family. Yeah. When I see Brother Marvell. Yeah. I hear the Lord speaking once again from the bow of the ship. Yeah. And he's calling out to his people. Yeah. And brother, when he gets done calling. There are people that are watching this live stream. God's calling out to them and they just need to go ahead and come on. Yeah. There are people that will watch this live stream and they just need to go ahead and come on. Yeah. Because they know they hear the voice of the Lord. And they need to draw near unto him. For he is not far from any of us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You need to get past the madness of this world. And the chaos of the culture. Yeah. And we need to get our heads firmly in the house of God. And we need to get our eyes completely focused on his wonderful word. Because I want to tell you, saints of God, this world is soon enough going to get to the place where they're tired of the rocking and the reeling. There are people without number that are going to say we're tired of the chaos and confusion. And they ain't going to run down to the church that had the guy in the pulpit that was promoting the chaos. And they're not going to go down to the church that had the guy in the pulpit who was pushing the division. They're going to go someplace where they can find rest. I heard Brother Jonathan stand up in this pulpit. He said, God has brought us to a place where we can finally rest. Brother Marvell told me that after he came to church that Sunday night, that he got sleep for the first time in a year because the Lord had given him rest. There are people out here that are watching this over live stream that are tired of the chaos and confusion. They're tired of sleepless nights. They're tired of depression and anxiety. They're tired of fear and frustration. But I hear the Lord in this little ship. We've launched out just a little ways. And he's calling once again unto his people. And he's saying, come unto me, all ye that are heavy and burdened. I will give you rest. Hallelujah. And what we're going to see, saints of God, is soon enough the morning is going to come. And the weeping of the night is going to end. And 
joy is going to return unto the house of God until you hear the rejoicing of the Lord because we are no longer in a strange land for how can we sing the song of the Lord in a strange land but I have come unto Mount Zion unto the city of the living God and unto heavenly Jerusalem I am no longer a pilgrim or a stranger from the covenants of promise but I am fellow citizens with the saints in light and there are some of you people watching over live stream it is time for you to run out of the chaos the world is never going to fix this hell has broken loose and there's not an answer in the world but there's rest left under the people of God if they'll run to the house of God oh sister Opal if she was in this house tonight would tell us like she's told us over and over again children run to the house of God and I'm calling out children run to the house of God Lord, I've moved before, 
and look what came out of it. Lord, I've gone before, and look what happened. But there's something on the inside of me that's telling me that no matter what I've done before, I know if you ask me to do it again, hallelujah, even if I say that it doesn't seem to be what I would want to do. I have to believe there's a greater one. There's an unction from the Holy One. There's a second witness down on the inside of me that is telling me that even though I've done it before, if you ask me to do it again, you know better than what I know. And if I'll just obey you at your word, if I'll do like we're spoken to in the word of God that in the day you hear my voice harden not your heart as was in the day of provocation when your fathers provoked me in the wilderness if the Lord says cast out just say nevertheless if the Lord says go just say nevertheless if the Lord says launch out just say nevertheless and if we will obey him hallelujah now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us saints of God it's not over for God's children it's not over for sister Opal as long as there's breath in her body God still is able and even if the breath should lose her, leave her body God is still able I'm going to trust him with all my heart. I'm not going to try to figure this one out because God has her in his hand. And as long as she is in his hand, he is more than able to bring her out by his mighty arm. And once again, watch her stand in the sanctuary of the saints of God and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I feel something in here. It's time it's time for God to move again. It's time for God to heal again. It's time for God to work again. So you say, Pastor, what do we need to do? Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice. We're not going to wait for the victory to shout for it. But we're going to know that the victory... Hannah played it just the other week. The battle is his. The victory is mine. And victory is sweet. Can New Destiny, just a few of us in here, take a moment right now and just begin to praise God for the victory. Oh, if you're sitting at home, oh, clap your hands on you people. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. You that are sick, be healed. You are that are bound, be delivered. You that are plagued, may the curse be lifted. You that are under the yoke, may the yoke be destroyed. You that are bound in chains, may the chains be broken. You that are in prison doors, may the devil swing the door cell, swing open. It is time for you to be free. Come out of the world. Watch us move 
30, 40 miles out, and we'll have to open up another church. We'll go 30, 40 miles out and have to open up another church. Why? Because the net that God has caused us to cast out will not this one little place, this one fellowship won't even be able to hold it. And the Bible said, and they beckoned under their partners. They looked at all the men that were fishing with them. Oh, hallelujah. I can't wait for the talent till the day comes. When we have such an in gathering and the talent is so great, I can say this brother in Missouri is struggling. And I thank God he sent us to you. He sent you to us. But I'm sending you to Missouri. And you go put that church on its feet. And you help that brother establish the work of God. See, God's lining us up with some partners. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. God's lining us up with some partners. And when the end gathering comes into this church, we won't be selfish with God's people. But we'll say, God's sending you to this city. And God's sending you to that city. Now go and hold up the arms of the man of God. Go and submit yourself to the work of God. And do that. They said, man, if we hold this many sheep, yeah, yeah. this many fish, we're going to sink. Yeah. But God didn't send them to us alone. Yeah. To bless us alone. Yeah. But he sent us. He sent them to us. Yeah. To be a blessing to you. Yeah. yeah. Which were in the other ship. That they should come and help. Yeah. And they came and filled both the ships. Yeah. So that they began. Yeah, yeah. Come Keep on. going. Come on. Come when on. Simon Peter saw, he fell down at the knee at Jesus' knees, saying, yeah, yeah. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. Yeah, yeah. Which I cannot believe I've done. Yeah, I, I can't believe what I had done. For he was astonished. And all that were with him, at yeah. which draught of the fishes which they had taken in. Yeah. Verse 10. And so was also James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not. From henceforth, keep going. Thou shalt catch men. Ah. He said, In the manner. In the man yeah. that you have caught these fish. Yeah. Yeah. From this moment forward, you shall catch me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Yeah. God knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. And from this moment forward, your destiny and these brethren listening and watching or we're watching. You shall catch me. Yeah. 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 One of these Father's Day, the church won't be empty. Yeah. 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 Seems to me the only day people want to staff churches on Father's Day. Yeah. That's yeah. a shame. Because the Father is the priest of the home. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you staff a church on Father's Day and come to church on Mother's Day? Yeah. Amen. God's going to have a people. And they're going to obey him and his word. Amen. So the Holy Ghost. Amen. So the Lord has spoken in this place tonight. Amen. I'm not going any further. We're just going to stop right there. I feel like the Lord has spoken. Amen. After this, After this, you shall catch me.
Jesus, we shall catch him. I'm telling you, that's speaking right now. There is there are words that have come out of my mouth this weekend that you're gonna want the fulfillment of. After this, we shall catch him. All right, we're gonna receive our offering. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Go, go shake somebody's hand and tell them, after this we catch men. <laughs>